Hey guys, it's Matthew here once again, giving you another build, another video for it, and this time around it's cast on crit discharge, everybody's favourite thing to cast on crit, and uh, it's actually not too bad at the moment, with uh, a few bit of funky new tools towards the uh, build, and in this case the biggest one being the Astral Projector Ring, which is a new item this league, and it lets your Nova skills, any sort of skill that originates at your character typically, uh, be put somewhere at your cursor instead. When it's combined with cast on crit, however, it's going to proc wherever your uh, ability procs. So, or crits rather. So my spectral throw here is the activator. Whenever my spectral throw crits, it is going to launch a discharge far away from me wherever it crits. So it no longer originates at your body. And that makes... Um, Spectral throw or ranged cast on crit activators have a few more options than they previously did because uh, it won't no uh, it won't any longer be originating at your body and meaning you don't have to face tank things and you certainly don't have to use cyclone for some of these skills anymore which is pretty convenient for uh, certain things like metamorph for certain things like blighted maps and potentially some end game bosses where you don't really want to face tank them but you had no choice with cyclone before now it is typically still a very good activator cyclone because it just has really good procs per second and uh, pretty reliable too whereas spectral throw requires the use of gmp uh, to give you extra projectiles so by default you're already wasting two sockets for your cast on crit setup and then cast on crit itself and the discharge so that's already four links leaving you only a couple uh, open for viable damage supports and uh for the most part, that hasn't really been an issue so far. Uh, I've had plenty of damage all the way through up until tier 13 or so maps. My golems as an elementalist so far have been surviving totally fine, though I'm not using a primordial chain like I have in the past because it's simply not worth it uh, to reduce golem life at the moment with the way metamorphs and... Um, the game has scaled, I would say, but we'll have to wait and see how things hold up against the Cirrus Awakener fight, since that, since that is where people have been saying golems die a lot. But overall, the character using the staple items of Vol's Protector, which gives you crit uh, power charges per crit strike very reliably and refills your power charge bar quite substantially, uh, as well as... Vol's Devotion to convert our power charges into endurance charges once they're expended, and then uh, Astral Projector. Those three staples for the build have been working really nicely, and they weren't too much to get going, at least to begin with. Uh, 3C for a Vol's Protector unlinked, 30C for a Vol's Devotion, 30C for the Ring. We'll have to wait and see what happens with those, but hey, you can always wait a week and then play around with these things again anyway. And you can see in the background here the non-microtransaction discharge as well. I play around with both, depending on which one you like more and what's more satisfying at the time. And uh, doing some double beyond maps uh, over here as well. It's probably one of the better characters I've had for double beyond, at least this league, uh, comparable to maybe the puncture gladiator which has the nice bleed explosions that just destroy beyond but uh it is a very nice clear speed character and uh somewhat reliable and safe being an elementalist though you could definitely do it as some other ascendancies i was looking strongly into doing uh assassin or trickster before starting this thing you could even go cultist you could go inquisitor but since we're using elemental equilibrium we didn't really want to make use of inquisitor this time around but uh just something you might want to think about touching some astral projector ring and uh some other things like wands barrage uh bows blast rain barrage once again you can definitely do some more funky range setups and you definitely don't need a cosprey's malice to be pulling off some pretty viable casts on crits at the moment i don't think so anyway so it's been pretty good it is uh, still a uh, kind of a work in progress so i don't have a full-blown uh viable video to show you of all the end game but i'm pretty confident i'll be able to do most of the bosses it's just up to whether or not cirrus himself will be killing my golems and likewise in my previous elementalist meolum build the meolnir golem one where you sustain righteous fire indefinitely i did try out a little bit of righteous fire here but i'm not scaling 
uh, life regen anywhere near as much. And I don't have eight golems worth of buffs since I've only got five. My life regen will be worse. But with enough momentum, you can see that you can just press Righteous Fire and still uh, run your way through a map, gain a bunch of extra damage, and uh, somewhat sustain it as long as you have enough momentum going. So that's something that uh, you can maybe play around with as well. Similar to the Mjolum's uh, build, but uh, just not really built for pure sustain at the moment anyway. So let's dive into uh, how I built this character and what you kind of need to make it work. So here's our character, Omega Pog is on crit. It's an emote in chat, which is uh, pretty amusing for what it does anyway. Uh, level 89 Elementalist can be plenty of other ascendancies. Still in level 89, trying to fill out a bit more life since currently it's not that well um, lifed up but uh it does have some good mitigation so we're not dying all that much just yet anyway and as i mentioned the three items we are entirely building around are vol's devotion uh, vol's protector and astral projector so the entire reason for making this build to begin with was because of the astral projector ring i wanted to make a self-cast shock nova where you can just you know place shock novas wherever you want at your mouse cursor but um Instead, we kind of got to thinking about Discharge again, and I do love me a good Spectral Throw Discharge, uh, or Spectral Throw Cast on Crit, so I wanted to go ahead and make one of these uh, once I got to thinking about it. And as I mentioned, it will proc wherever your crit is, so if you crit a Spectral Throw at the very end, that's where your Discharge is going to go off. So it makes it for a bit more defense, uh, defensive playstyle, a bit more ranged, and then with Vol's Protector, as always, using it for um, Discharge is pretty good synergy because uh, instead of giving you just one power charge for your entire attack's crit, if you crit 10 enemies with one attack, you typically get one power charge. Uh, Vol's Protector bypasses that sort of mechanic and you'll get 10 power charges if you crit 10 things with your one attack. So it's one of the best uh, sort of items out there to continually sustain power charges and when you are continually trying to get rid of your entire stack with um, Discharge, it becomes the go-to chest. Now these days it does also have Inner Conviction, which is uh, just giving you more damage per power charge and it means you can't generate frenzy charges. So I am still using Blood Rage for uh, a bit of extra attack speed, but it's also my Arcane Surge trigger, as you can see up here, Blood Rage Arcane Surge, but we don't get any frenzy charges from it anymore. So you'll notice that I have one minimum frenzy charge that is um, attached to my Assassin Mark Ring, and you cannot use minimum charges for discharge. If you have a minimum frenzy, it's just always yours. You can't discharge it. It doesn't go towards your discharge. Likewise, if I got a minimum power or a minimum endurance, you can't discharge those. They're just going to be there giving you buffs permanently. So we don't want that because we want to generate power, generate endurance, and then discharge them. And then Vol's uh, Devotion, once you get power charges and discharge them, get endurance charges. So you should be able to see throughout the video that basically we are always at full stacks of both power and endurance and constantly discharging them. That is also thanks to 30% chance for discharge to deal damage without removing charges helm. So a lot of the time you'll keep your charges, but we do really sustain quite often um, max charges anyway, so I'm not sure the helm's strictly necessary. And then the uh, boots over here as well, Inia's Epiphany, 25% chance that if you gain power charges, you instead gain up to your maximum. So one in four attacks, you're gonna go from one power charge to six uh, instantly. And with Spectral Throw, the amount that it hits and on the rotation and all that, it's pretty reliable to be at full stacks. Though you could definitely beat these boots with some funkier crafts nowadays, some elusive on crit, some tailwind, uh, life resists, all of that. I'd say these are the less strictly needed piece of the lot. And as well as that, you can see that my helm has minus fire, minus lightning. So I crafted that with uh, metallic and scorched and pristine fossils. And it's kind of a cool craft, but uh, it's really not that necessary. It... Um, doesn't do too much to our damage, I don't think, because a lot of the time we are trying to be ranged and it won't even be working for us. So you can instead uh, do what some people are doing for their golem sustain, and that's put all of or four of their golems into the uh, helm and then do a 
trigger socketed spells when focus craft. So every time you press focus, you're summoning golems all over again, and that can be pretty reliable for golem sustain, especially in the end game. I haven't got that yet, and currently it seems fine for my golems, but we may need to look into that if end game golem sustain isn't that good. Uh, besides that, we just tried to get a plus one fire, lightning, or cold uh, shield, and then a bit of life and a spare suffix to go for the double damage focus. Uh, try to craft a dagger. What you're looking for is some good attack speed, some good crit, and then room to craft double damage focus as well. Uh, this is as good as I could make after a couple of thousand alterations, but you can definitely go different directions with your um, trigger weapon. Can be a sword, can be uh, a claw for life gain on hit, can be a scepter if it's got funky enough stats. And prior to actually making that one, I was using this one, which I made with just some essences as well. Uh, the weapon really can be pretty damn basic and still do very well. Most of the video, as a matter of fact, I think almost all of the video I showed was using this dagger and daggers similar that you're gonna get that you're mostly just looking for crit and attack speed with a spare suffix are gonna cost you just a few chaos. So it's not very hard to get the uh, activator weapon at all. It's uh, more about fine tuning the rest of your gear. So we have reduced flask charge belt, uh, crit strikes against shocked enemies, um, gloves that uh, also have lightning resist. That's the temple mod. And then we had to get a lot of dexterity on these just so that um, I could use some of my gems. Though with a bit of a respec, we might actually grab some dexterity here anyway and kind of fix that up. And then I just crafted an assassin mark ring for you know, nice little bit of crit. And that's about it for the gear. So for the actual support um, setup we have in our six link here, it's spectral throw, cast on crit, discharge, and GMP. That's our staple four. I'm then using crit damage, which I was using because I had low crit damage, but at this point it's far from the best um, thing to be using. I'll probably put in uh, energy leech and then maybe swap it for conch effect on single target and inspiration as my last one now when we want to go single target we take out gmp put in hypothermia and it should be a lot more damage but it you know takes us back down to one projectile so that's pretty much it for the links there we got all our golems up there got herald of ice precision and uh, zealotry running in the boots uh, righteous Fire, just to press Vile Righteous Fire. Flame Dash to combo with our Whirling Blades. And Whirling Blades, Faster Attacks and Fortify. And as far as Passive Tree is concerned, it's basically a Spellcaster Passive Tree, but you do get a few other little things and it's not really locked in. Uh, at the moment, I am going all the way out here and getting uh, Spiritual Aid, but it's not all that worth it. I might do a bit of a respec and get a bit more life get a bit more crit multi, something like that. But so far, that's the passive tree. Uh, you do want the golem node for sure, so that you can get an extra golem. Uh, and as well as that, to get an extra golem, you want to run anima stone. So that's why we have five golems in our build, getting us plenty of extra buffs. And then we've also got beacon of ruin for extra shock against enemies. Since we do have a fair bit of shock effect with static blows, the node itself, and Actually, not that much more shock effect. I think in total, it's something like 100% shock effect. So you do guarantee uh, about 30% increased damage taken on any enemy. Uh, but you would definitely want to go out of your way for some power charges. And you can technically, instead of anointing static blows, anoint something like uh, this endurance charge here. But it shouldn't be much more. It might actually be very similar amounts of damage in the end. But there might still be a bit of a respec on my tree. So far, this is what I've done though. And uh, just got a Zealot Tree Watcher's Eye that has crit strikes attached to it. But for now, I think that's all I'll say on the build. There are plenty of things to say about it. Just check out the POB and uh, the character's um, build in the build list. There's still a few things that are being fine-tuned, but for the most part, this is what the build looks like. And I'm sustaining mana just by using an enduring mana flask. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.